Amen. Here in just a moment we'll sing page 278. Page 278, if you want to find that, we'll sing at Calvary. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm thankful for the cross of Calvary and what it means to me and the Savior that died upon it. And praise God he didn't stay there. He was buried and he rose again. And he's coming again. Hallelujah. I bless the Lord for that. It may not be long. Praise God. It may be before I get to preach this evening. We'll just go up together to meet the Lord in the air. But let's go to the Lord in prayer and then we'll sing this wonderful song together. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this evening and we're grateful, Lord, to be able to come. Lord, we're thankful that we can uh, come to the throne of grace. Lord, that we might obtain mercy to find grace to help in the time of need. Father, I think about many right now that I know that aren't feeling well, and I pray, God, you'd touch their bodies. I pray, God, you'd be with them, meet their needs physically. God, meet their needs emotionally, meet their needs spiritually, O oh Lord. You know what they stand in need of. And I pray for those, Lord, that are out of town right now. I think about uh, the Niehaus family, Lord, that you'd keep them safe as they've traveled up to Iowa. I pray for uh, Brother Matt Niehaus's mother. Lord, for you allow him to be able to have a space, a time, to be able to talk with her. And I pray for her, Lord. Lord, you know what's going on. Lord, I have no problem praying and knowing that it's your will to save sinners. I have no problem praying that. And I ask you, Lord, that you'd do so. I pray, Father in heaven, that you'd meet with us here tonight. Lord, that your name would be exalted. As we get ready to sing, even when we sing about Calvary, praise the Lord that we can sing about Calvary. And I pray, Lord, that uh, we would do our best as we sing tonight. I pray, Lord, that everything that takes place here this evening would bring honor and glory to you. We'll thank you and we'll praise you for all that you do. For it is in the Lord Jesus Christ's name which we do pray. Amen. Amen. If you will, if you're able, let's stand. We'll sing page 278. At Calvary.
that you would turn over to page 399, page 399, and we'll sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. Oh, yes. Turn to page 271. 271, then we'll sing No, Not One. Brother Bobby Mullinax, if you would, I'd like you to pray for us, please. Heavenly yeah. Father, Lord, it's for a privilege and a thankful heart, Lord, that I approach your holy throne. And I ask you tonight, Lord, as we've met together, please, Lord, as you did the disciples of old, Breathe upon us, Lord, that sweet spirit. Yes, O Lord. May you have complete liberty, Lord, to Amen. speak to our hearts in this service. If there should be any hindrance in this service, I pray, Lord, it would be conquered at this present time. Amen. And I pray, Father, that our pastor, our preacher, the man called of God, I pray, Lord, that you would allow him to preach the unsearchable riches of our Lord and Savior tonight. Thank you again, Lord, for every precious person that has come out and gathered with us tonight. And I pray, Lord, it will be a profitable time for all that have gathered together around your word. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much for your lovely, wonderful, wonderful gift of your precious son for my sin. And I ask you, please, Lord, as we approach the time in our life when sunset is looming, I pray, Father, that you'd help us to be strong and fearful and honor you, Lord, in every way with our lips and with our life. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you're full of mercy. Lord, you're so wonderful can't even describe your wonderful love and your grace, Lord. So tonight, we adore you. We love you, Lord. Oh, you sure didn't have to love me. That's right. Helen, thank you, Jesus. But you did. Yes. And you died for me, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I pray that you would help me to always realize that. It's a mighty small thing, Lord, to be able to serve you. That's right. But I want to count it as riches, Lord. Thank you, Lord. One of the greatest things that ever come into my life was the birth or being birthed into your family. Yes. And so I pray tonight, Lord, there's a lot of people that suffer, a lot of people that are sick. And I sure want to thank you, Lord, for sparing me. Yes, sir. And for each one of these. Amen. And maybe the whole family, Lord. We just want to say it very humbly. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Now, Father, give us guidance. Give us help and give us instruction. And there's nothing, Lord, nothing no better than to be able to do that in your book. That's it. Precious old That's right. Wonderful black book. 
an old King James. Amen. Lord, Amen. That stood the test of time. Hallelujah. That's what you've used down through the seasons, yes. Lord. That's what you've used. And we thank you for that. And I pray we count it a treasure, Lord. Not just something to collect dust, but a treasure. Right. Thank you, oh Lord. Thank you for each precious person. And it's gathered in the doors of our building tonight. And I pray you keep us all safe, close to you, and most of all, in your divine will. Do not let us miss what you want from our lives. And that will come from the old black book. Amen. So thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness in every way. We ask this in Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord's name, and for our sakes, we do pray. Amen. Amen. You've been on a long and troubled road. At times you felt cheated to have to bear this load. While others who have barely even tried have spread their wings like eagles and soared into the It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. Jesus is softly calling. But because of who he is and because of where he's been, because of what he's done, you can start all over again. Yes, this guilty burden you have had to bear has often left you hurting with others unaware of the mountains of mistakes you try to hide. With a smile on your face and a broken heart inside. 
It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. Jesus is softly calling, but because of who he is and because of where he's been, because of what he's done, you can start all over again. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for fresh starts. Hallelujah. Amen. So I don't know about that. Well, Jeremiah knew something about it when he went down to the potter's house. He saw work on the wheel. The Bible says that the potter made it anew, made it again anew. So he uh, seen there was something wrong with it and went to work on it. Amen. I'm thankful this evening that when there's something wrong with us, uh, praise God, it's not too big that he can't work on. It's not too much that he can't fix. There's not something going on in your life right now that the Lord Jesus Christ can't intervene, step in, and take care of. Praise God. Now, a lot of it has to do with whether or not we'll bring it to him. A lot of it has to do with whether or not we'll give it to him, whether or not we'll turn it over, whether or not we'll come to him. Amen. That's why he said into that great invitation to the, when he's talking to the disciples, and he said, Come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, all you labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. There was a come. There was an invitation, praise God. And I'm glad this evening that I can go to him in those times. But praise God, I can go to him when I'm not in those times. Amen. We ought to be doing that as well. Yeah, if right. you found in your Bibles, look in the book book of Exodus, and the book of Exodus this evening will be in the 34th chapter, and uh, we've come a journey through here. We'll see tonight what Exodus chapter 34 has to say to us, and we'll begin, I guess we'll begin in verse number 28. I invite you, if you're able, to stand with me and reference the reading of God's Word, and uh, just a small thought this evening. Uh, I told a preacher friend of mine on the phone today, and I also talked to someone the other day and let them know when uh, I was talking about something. I said, I'm very simple. What comes out of my mouth will very much be that way. So if you're looking for something to awe you, you're looking at the wrong person. And praise God, but you can look at your Bible and find something to awe you. Amen. Uh, but we'll begin in verse number 28 and start reading there. The Bible says... And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount that Moses wist not, that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. Now afterward all the children of Israel came nigh and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And till Moses had done speaking with him, he put a veil on his face. And when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake with the children of Israel, which, um, that which he was commanded and the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, and Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him, that is the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this evening for thy word. Lord, I ask you to help us to make it a lamp in our feet and light into our path. Lord, that we'll hide it in our heart, the words in our heart, that we might not sin, O Lord, against thee. And Father, I pray that if there be anything within me tonight that be unclean, anything within me, Lord, that I haven't already sought thee for, I ask you to forgive me. I pray, God, you cleanse me, wash me, make me white as snow. Help us this evening to preach thy word and thy word alone. Lord, it's thy word that will 
uh, tear up and thy word which will uh, that will break up the fallow ground. It's thy word that will take the hardest stone and break it down. And, Lord, that will melt it, I pray. Use it tonight. And, Lord, help us to see how to be closer to thee. We'll give you the honor and the glory for everything that you do. For it is in the Lord Jesus Christ's name which we do pray. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. This evening, we'll look at, here in the text, uh, shining... For the Lord. Uh, we'll preach on that just for a few moments on shining for the Lord. Uh, we find ourselves in a very interesting uh, text in how the Lord has uh, shown himself unto Moses. But then uh, I find it interesting that Moses comes off that mount and Moses don't know what he looks like or Moses don't see what's going on and Moses don't see what everybody else is seeing in him. He wist not, the Bible said. We'll look at that as well. But you think about it, this is now, there's a, been another time Moses has been on this mount. Another time Moses spent many days up here and nights with the Lord, fasted, and uh, the same, some of the same things happened. But Moses come down off the mount at that point, and it wasn't the same way. It didn't end the same way. Uh, the turnout wasn't the same. People didn't recognize the same thing they recognized this next time that he comes up or comes down off the mount. Now I think some of that has to do with well, what um, Moses brought down with him the first time in those tables and he broke them without the camp. And I think about that and I was reading behind someone the other day mentioning that and the fact is that what he had wrote on those tablets, on those stones when he come down, if he would have brought that on in the camp, there's judgment wrote on those tablets, on those stones. And what they had done would have required some things. And he broke that outside, but now he's coming down again, bringing very much the same thing, which is also a symbol of God's mercy and grace. We'll look at that as well this evening, how he was able to bring that back down and in God's mercy and in God's grace, allowing him to do that again or doing that for them again. I should say he done that amen the God of glory did but there'll be a few things we look at tonight but it's very interesting when we come here uh, that we find some things about this number one one thing we'll look at and uh, the Bible shows us here it shows this it shows us the face of the prophet it shows us his face that is Moses's face look with me please in verse number 29 the Bible says and it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And here's one thing I'd like to talk about a little bit under this, underneath the fact of that his face, the face of the prophet, it was the one that was shining. Now, there's plenty of people in the camp. None of their face was doing the same thing that Moses was doing. There was plenty of people around None of their face was shining like Moses's. Some would say it's just a special privilege for Moses and Moses only. I don't disregard that, but I believe it's because where Moses has been. I believe it's because of what Moses has seen. I believe it's because of what Moses has experienced. And, uh, you know, it ain't, the, can I say it like this, it ain't the first time, quote, unquote, that Moses has seen some glory from God because if you remember correctly, when he was on the one mound and he seen the burning bush, that was God's glory burning in that bush. And, and the bush was not consumed, but Moses didn't leave there the same way. Moses didn't leave from that meeting with the Lord the same way he left with this one. Now, he was on this mount already again earlier on uh, before they had sinned and made that calf and that golden calf. And when he come down, his face didn't shine then. He come down a different way. But here's some things I'd like to point out just a little bit about Moses. We think about this. Look with me in verse 28. And I believe this is important when we think about shining for the Lord. I'm not just talking about Moses here. I would refer even to us as far as us being seen as one that has been in the presence of God. And that's one thing we'll look at. But look in verse 28. And the Bible says that he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. And so we see the time spent with God. Not only do we think, man, he's been 40 days, 40 nights, we can almost say he's been close to 80 days and 80 nights. The first time was ended a little 
abruptly, but I mean, think about this for a moment. He spent time with God. Now, I believe if anybody's going to shine for the Lord like Moses shined for the Lord, I believe if anybody's going to look like Moses looked when it comes to other people, it's going to take time spent with God. Unfortunately, in this day, in this hour, I just spoke with a man earlier on the phone. I said, you know, what really got me about my pastor's funeral was that when Brother Marion preached, he said that Brother Samuel loved the glory. In other words, he loved being in the presence of God. He loved being around God. He loved God being around him. And But he said uh, the first time he'd ever heard Brother Sammy preach, and that he heard him preach and he got mad at him. He said his message made me mad. Later on, he said, I heard him again, met him again, and was talking to him. He said, and he literally told me this. He said, Brother Mary, the reason you don't have any power with God is because you sat up so late on Saturday night watching TV till them double zeros come up. That's what he said. Amen. And Brother Marion said, you know what? That made me mad because that's true. But he, Now let me just say this. I, I'm not hammering on the TV this evening. And, and that, that wasn't what Brother Sammy was ultimately saying. Now Brother Sammy didn't have one, but that wasn't what he was saying. The fact is that he was saying to Brother Mary, and I believe it's the same way with each and every one of us if we're not careful. We'll spend more time with something else than we do with the Lord. Now, it's no problem for somebody to sit down in front of that TV and watch a three-hour football game or baseball game or watch their favorite TV show and go on a, what they call a binge and watch about 14 shows and, and then sit back and never even look at their Bible. Amen. They'll go to bed and not even crack their Bible open. I mean, they woke up that morning and began to watch the TV, went to bed that night. I don't even know if they got out of bed, but went to bed that night watching the same thing and never thought about the Lord. But they expect to have God's presence in their life. I mean, I'm not talking about lost people. I'm talking about saved people. But expecting that the presence of God is going. Moses said, you know what? It requires time. Lord, I'll spend all the time you require of me with you versus with anybody else. So Moses went up on that mount with the time uh, that was going to be spent with God set aside just for God. Now, I believe everybody in here should have time every day set aside just for God. It's just you and the Lord. Now, it's not going to be for anybody else. It's not going to be to be interrupted. Maybe that you get along. Maybe you go in a room somewhere. You get up early before everybody else gets up. Or and you may stay up late after everybody else goes into bed. I don't know. But you've got time just with you and the Lord. Nobody else is there but you and God. And what that does is because if you're going to spend it with him, you're going to have to spend it in his word. You understand now, it, I, I believe in just sitting there sometimes and meditating on God before I go to prayer. But I'm going to tell you, if you're going to know God, you're going to have to know his word. Amen. And his word is going to work in you. His word is going to go through you. And it's going to make you and cause you to be what he desires for you to be. The Bible says that we're predestinated to be conformed to the image and the likeness of the Son. He's working on every individual that is saved and conforming and transforming us, which we'll look at that word here in a little bit in uh, Corinthians and chapter number 3 in 2 Corinthians. But here's one thing I'll show you. The Bible says in verse 28, and he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. And then look at this, the very next thing. We, not only do we think about time, but we also think about the appetite that is seen here. And his appetite comes down to this. Yes, he, he did neither eat bread nor drink water. He said, you know, I'll put that aside. That won't bother me. Why? Because what I'm hungry for, what I'm thirsty for is you, God. It's what you have for me. And the Bible still says, blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness. And what does it end with? For they shall be filled. It don't say they could be, they might be, but they shall be. Now, I believe you get hungry and you get thirsty enough and you decide to set things aside. You decide to fast. That's what they call fasting. That's what Moses done, praise God. He said, you know what? I'll fast. Why? Because I want to see and I want to talk to you face to face, Lord. Amen. Yes. 
Now that's what we're seeing here. His time was consumed with God. His appetite was consumed with God. Now I realize it was just his appetite in food and drink as we see here. But I just say this, I don't believe uh, that Moses was, was worried about going and playing volleyball anyway. So uh, what it was for Moses, his appetite was all about the Lord. His appetite was only about the Lord. And he thought, you know, if I get before the presence of God, and I'll just drink it in. I'll just heat it up. I'll soak it up. I'll just stay here. I'll lay before you, Lord. You remember the Bible says when he heard these things that he fell on his face. He worshiped the Lord for who he was. Now I think about this for a moment and considering some things. Now look, I, I'm an individual. I like to do things. I enjoy going hunting and fishing. I, I mean, praise God, I like to eat as far as that goes. I mean, you might not be able to tell it, but I do. But it won't hurt missing a meal to spend time with the Lord. Amen. It won't hurt for me not to go fishing instead taking that time and spending it with the Lord. It won't hurt for somebody to take time from what they would normally do. That's what really fasting is. It's what you would regularly do. Take that away and give it to the Lord. Now some people think, well, if i got to give up coffee, you can forget it. It do some of us good to give up coffee, amen? amen. Now, I, I, I stay so ner uh, People say, man, you get so, you're so hyper and you're so active. Yeah, I, people say you make jello nervous, amen. That's how I feel sometimes. I don't have to have coffee to be this way. But praise God, the thing is, sometimes it'd be good just to put it away. Amen. Why? To let the Lord know that you're serious about Him. Amen. Moses said, you know, it don't matter about anything else. What matters to me is you, Lord. And here we are, in me, just me and you. My appetite is focused solely on you. Uh, the food that I'll eat will be you. The, the, uh, my drink will be you. The Lord said, praise God, that he'll give you a drink that you'll never thirst again. Uh, amen. And so we think about what's taking place. We think about the face of this prophet. We think of the time he spent. We think of the, uh, the appetite in which he had. Uh, but then not only do we see those things, we find some other things going on. He had to do some things. He, uh, there was some writing taking place. There was some carving or something. Some, uh, some shaping of things taking place before we ever before we ever went there. And so for us this evening, we don't surely we don't just think, man, I'll live how I want, the way I want, and when I want, and people will just see Jesus in me. It don't work that way. But some people think, you know, I'll just go live the lifestyle of the world, and then I'll just tell the world that I know Jesus. That wasn't gonna work for much. There's a distinct difference between Moses and Israel right here. Yes. Moses wasn't down there offering uh, to some golden calf. Amen. Moses had put the idols aside. And praise God, when he came out of Egypt, he left the idols. Amen. You know, he, believe it or not, Moses grew up in Pharaoh's household. He knew what idols were. He knew what gods were. He knew what all that was. But he chose to rather suffer the affliction with God's people. than he's seen the sufferings of Christ far greater than the things of the palace. And so Moses said, you know, I'll go with you, God. And when Moses made that decision, it was no problem for Moses to put the rest aside. I believe with all my heart there's some people, I, I really believe that, would, that when people would see them, they'd say, you know, that person, that's got to be a child of God right there. Why? Because that per, their, their countenance, you see, that was, that's what was saying. His countenance was showing the Lord. And when somebody has spent time with him, believe me, I, every time I'd get around my pastor almost, I'd just be like, man, there's just, there's, just, there's just something about him. And it wasn't that he was just my pastor. I praise God he was, but my pastor, but that wasn't it. It was that four hours he spent in prayer that morning. It was that time he spent in the Word of God. It was the time that he carved out for the Lord and said, nobody's getting that. And see, every one of us, if we desire that, if we want that, it don't just, it don't just all of a sudden fall in your lap one day. Amen. There's things that we'll have to do. There's things that is required from us. You say, you act like you've got to work for it. No, it's freely given, but you'll have to empty out of yourself. Moses had emptied himself for God to use. The face of the prophet. Now think about this. You say, well, this is all Old Testament. We, we can understand that. Well, I'd say this. Acts chapter number 6. If you'd like to turn there. In Acts chapter number 6. We read of a man here in Acts chapter 6 that the Bible's referring to and has something very similar to say to him and about him. This man is known by the name of Stephen. The Bible has something to say about Stephen. 
The Bible says in verse number 5, And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen. Why is that? Well, he's a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. He wasn't the only one. You find Philip and others as well. But the fact is, Stephen was a man who walked with the Lord. And the distinct difference between Stephen and his crew that he's named with here is that they are, they are full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. They, they have something about, there's a quality about them that these men noticed. There's a quality about them that, that other people seen. It wasn't they seen it in themselves. Other people seen it in them. Now, just for a moment, I'll flip back over to the, the book of Matthew, and I believe it's in the 17th chapter. Uh, but I want to say something uh, here in Matthew chapter 17, verse number 2. It says, and was transfigured. This is the Mount of Transfiguration. This is the Lord Jesus Christ and his father did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light. So when the glory of Christ, you understand when Jesus stepped out of heaven and was robed in flesh, he put his glory aside. The glory of Christ was laid to the side when he came to this sin-cursed earth. But at this point in Matthew 17, they descended another mountain. And when they get to the top of this mountain, the Christ Jesus is transfigured and his face is shining. There's something about the glory of God that will cause a face to shine. There's something about the glory of God that will cause one to be different in front of others. There's something, of, can I say this, of Moses and Elijah was seen on this mountain as well. Well, and there was something about the glory that was still seen in them. Amen. Now understand this in Acts chapter 6. I just went to Matthew 17 to show you something about the glory. But in Acts chapter number 6 we'll go back there for a moment. And the Bible has something to say about Stephen. It talks about how Stephen began to preach in verse 8. And Stephen full of faith and power and did great wonders and miracles among the people. There rose up some that had some things to say. They were upset with Stephen. Well the Bible says in verse number 15 and all that sat in the council look instead fastly on him that him is Stephen. Let's see what it says about him. Saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Now why is Stephen's face shining? Why is Stephen's face aglow? It's because Stephen praise God knew something about the Lord that they didn't know about. But can I say that this council that wasn't a godly council that's men that are wanting to put him to death eventually. But this council knew something different about Stephen. I wonder, do they know something different about you this evening? Do they pay attention to you? We're talking about the face of the prophet, but surely it can, well, let's go to the face of the priest for a moment. That's when we think about a priest, but is that not what Revelation says that we are? Yes. That we're kings and priests. Through Christ Jesus. In Revelation chapter 1 says that. In Revelation you'll find that out. But, but the fact is uh, this evening that someone should see Jesus in you. Yes. Your face should be shining because of uh, who and what's going on in your life. Now he begins to preach. He begins to thunder. He begins to say some things. And man he makes some people mad. And praise God we find that Saul was there. Then Saul had some things to say. And when Saul railed and when Saul persecuted, the Bible lets us know that he had him put to death. And in verse 59 of chapter 7 says, And they stoned Stephen, calling upon the Lord, or calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. But here's what I want you to notice, that when he's calling on the Lord, here's what somebody will be like when their face is shining for the honor and glory of God. Here's what... This is what I'm talking about, somebody's countenance, amen. When somebody's shining for the Lord and when somebody cares about what God cares about. And the Bible says in verse number 60, it says, And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And he, when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now think about it for a moment. He didn't say, Lord, I wish you'd just go ahead and call on down that thunder and fire. And Lord, if you'd just go ahead and do this, that'd be great. No, he said, forgive them, Lord. Don't lay it to their charge. Yes. Why? Because he cared about what the Lord cared about. Because if I do remember correctly, our Savior from the cross, Father, forgive them if they know not what they do. He didn't just have bitterness all railed up on the inside of him because of what's being done. No, why? He's full of the Holy Ghost. His face, his countenance, the way he is, is completely different from other ones. 
It's completely different from the rest of them. Now think about this as well. There's one that is here that day. His name's Saul, amen. In case you don't know, that's the Apostle Paul later on. And this had an impact on him. This made a difference in his life. Can I tell you that if you would just spend time with the Lord and if you would be with the Lord and let the Lord be with you what He desires to be in your life, that people around you would see that there's something different, that there's something going on. Now, hold on because we're not done in the book of Acts. In chapter number 4, we find some other men that have spent time with the Lord. And the Bible says in verse and number 13, it says, Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unbelievable, Unlearned and ignorant men. And praise God, I know what that's like, but I may not know what the rest of this is, but I know what that was like. When they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. They took knowledge of them. What was it about them that was different? That they had been with Jesus. That's what the Bible says. Now, praise God, if you spend time with Him, you don't have to worry about whether or not somebody's going to see that or whether or not somebody's going to take note of that. They said, you know, we can tell they've spent time with Jesus. We can tell they well, back over here in Exodus 34 here we go again uh, thinking about the face of the prophet and they said you know his face is shining there's something going on with him it wasn't like that when he went up on that mount uh, but it sure is now that he's come down off of it look with me please in verse in number 29 that the Bible says and it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand when he came down from the mount that Moses wist not the skin of his face shone but while he talked with him. Here's one thing I'd like to mention as well about the face of the prophet before we go on into the fear of the people. Underneath the face of the prophet, here's one thing that you don't have to worry about if you spend time with the Lord. You don't have to worry about coming out of there and talking about how much time you spent with him. You don't have to worry about coming out of there thinking I'm somebody. No, he come, he come off the mound and he's, he, he is now what we know as the meekest man that's ever lived. He come off that mount, and he, he didn't know it. He didn't know what was going on in him. He didn't know what was going on around on the outside of him. He didn't know that his face was shining. He didn't know that literally it was like rays coming out of his face of the glory of God being on him. He didn't know that. Other people knew it. He didn't come down saying, boys, I spent time with God, and you need to look up in here for a moment. No. But they said, you know, something's different about you, Moses. There's something going on. Your face is shining. Your face is showing something different than it showed when you went up. And what you find in Moses is is humility. Yes. That's what you see in Moses. You see a humble man. He comes down. He gets down there. He has the tables with him. In his hand, they see his face. I'd like to mention this. We find the fear of the people. Secondly, it's what we see. Look in verse 30. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone. They were afraid to come nigh. They were afraid to come nigh him. They said, you're different. And they went away. They stepped back. They were, now they were amazed. They were frightened. And what we find at this point in their lives, don't forget Moses has went up and played with the Lord. Moses went up and said, Lord, please, he said, go with us. We're not going to settle when you're not going with us. Forgive them. Take my life, Lord. Now, here, there, here's another attribute of someone who spent time with the Lord. We'll go back for a moment to the face of the prophet. We may just linger there all night. I don't know. But Moses said, you know what? Don't kill them. Kill me. Take me, Lord. The Lord said, Moses, I'll take them out, and I'll start a whole new people with you. He said, no, no. Don't do it, Lord. A lot of people said, oh, yeah, go ahead, Lord. Not Moses. That wasn't, that wasn't Moses' heart. Moses loved him. Moses loved him, but he loved them. And himself was nothing. He was nothing in his own eyes. He was selfless. He wasn't selfish. Then we find here the fear of the people. And here's what I really believe. I, I believe this with all my heart. What they, what they have done, Brother Bobby, they've sinned. They're not right. Moses was the mediator. He's the man that went to God and said, forgive him, Lord. He comes down, the glory of the Lord's on his face, and they look, and when they see that the glory's there, 
they begin to be afraid because of their sin and they back up. Their sin is what has pushed them back. And can I say this evening, when you get around somebody that has the presence of God in their life and you're not living right, it'll cause you to have issues. It'll cause you to fear. It'll cause you to be in a place where you think, well, you know, I don't know that I necessarily need to be around them. I'll tell you like this. I'll give you some personal illustrations in my own life and thinking about my uh, uh, the people uh, that was at my church or my pastor and back when I wasn't living right with God and I was in sin. There'd be places we'd go and I'd see somebody. I'd run and dodge and hide to try to not be around them. Why? I didn't want them to see me the way I was. I didn't want them to see me how I was acting. I didn't want them to see what was going on in my life. That was not what I wanted them to see. But at the same time, my conscience was also bearing witness that I was in the wrong. And it was because I was in the presence of somebody who knew the Lord Amen. and had the presence of God in their life. Here's why it's important for us to have the presence of God in our life. Because when we're around those that are not right, It'll cause them to do one of two things. They'll either want a desire to get right, amen. They'll want to get right, or they'll want to get gone. They start to back up. Moses said, hold on, you come closer. Come back. Come back. We find that the fact is that there's fear that has fell upon them. Why? Their appetite wasn't like Moses's. Every time you turn around, they were saying, what about this? What about that? Look, what, what we used to have when we were in Egypt. What about the melons and the leeks and all that we had down there? And here we are out here. We don't have anything. Manna comes. What is it? It's manna. That's what we'll call it. It means what is it? And so they begin to eat manna. And then it's like, well, we're fed up with this manna that you've provided, Lord. We're fed up with what you've given. We want meat to eat, Lord. That's what we desire. And then you know how that went. But the fact is, what we see is we see their appetite wasn't like Moses. Their time wasn't spent like Moses. They had, time, they had plenty of time for fun and games while Moses was on the mount. He come down, that's what they was doing. The first time he come down, that's what they were doing. The second time he comes down, they begin to notice and they begin to fear. There's fear that falls on them. The Bible says this. Look, in the, look, look with me in verse number 31. The Bible says, And Moses called on them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him. And Moses talked with them. Moses began to talk with them. Moses said, come back. I've got something to say. It's worth hearing. Amen. What Moses is about to deliver is the commandments of God. He calls them back and begins to give that to them. Let me say this for just a moment as we think about uh, this thought of uh, Aaron and the children of Israel seeing Moses and beholding his skin and his, of his face was shining or it was shown. Can I say this? And I, I want to reference in Matthew in chapter number 5. Something that I believe uh, that we ought to consider and think about this evening as far as whether it be us or uh, those around us or uh, our church. The Bible says in verse number 13, it says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt hath lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Now notice verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. In other words, there's light that comes from you. There's a shining that comes out of you. And that the world sees. You're a testimony unto the world. You're the light that shines in a dark place. You're a light that is a testament of me and who I am. Then it says, that, it says, you're the light of the world. A city is set upon a hill, cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but under a candlestick and giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light, here it is, let your light. So shine before men that they may see your good works. Here's the rest. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. When Moses comes down, the glory of God is shining out of him and off of him. And they see it and they know that it's because of God. And Moses begins to give them the commandments of God. Moses begins to tell them and explain what God has said to him. And then some things happen. And then when they tell Moses, Moses recognizes what they've said. And and all the things are coming together. But at the end, I'd say this, and we think about what he, what he throws out. And when we consider about how that we are the light uh, in this day, in this age, we, uh, the church of the living God, is the light. And here's what the Bible says in John in chapter number 1. It tells us that um, there, there's in verse number 
4, it says that in him was life, and the light was the light of men. Verse 5 in John chapter 1, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And it goes on to talk about how he was not the light, John that is, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Can I explain to you that the light is on the inside of the born again child of God. If you're a believer, if you put your faith in Christ, the Holy Ghost lives on the inside of you. You've been birthed into the family of God. In John chapter 3 and verse number 3, he says that you must be born again. If you're born from above, born of the Spirit, then the Holy Spirit lives on the inside. And if the Holy Spirit lives on the inside, you're to be a light. Because he shines forth out of you. And Amen. then others see that. Because of what you are for the Lord, they're not seeing you. I hope, and I hope that we get that by now. That they didn't see Moses. What they seen was the glory of God abiding on Moses. Mm, help me right here because he don't abide on you. He abides in you. And my friend, if you're saved, the glory of God should be abiding in you in the presence of God should be seen by those around you. Yes. We consider this, and in just a moment we'll turn there in 2 Corinthians, but I, I would say this uh, concerning the fear of the people. Uh, the Bible says in verse number 32, and afterward all the children of Israel came nigh. And Moses said, come on, come over. Got something to say. They all came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Until Moses had done speaking with him, he put a veil on his face. We find that there's a veil that is seen here in the text. There's a veil that now comes out and goes over Moses' face. This veil covers the glory. Amen. Now, uh, there's plenty of things that is seen here, and we'll look at just a few of them once again. I told you I'm not the smartest person in the world, but I do believe we can find out what it's talking about, what it means. But the fact is, when we see the failing of this, the failing or the fading, I guess I should say that, when we see the fading of this taking place, as far as the glory, as, as far as when it fades, we find something that happens. Look what the Bible says in verse 34. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face Shown. Can I say that what happened was, as, as the glory of God, not Moses, it ain't got to do with Moses, it's got to do with God. As the glory, if it begins to fade, then we find the veil put over. Why? Because it's not, for, it's not for the children of Israel to see that fading. And then Moses goes back into God, takes it back off, takes the veil back off. And when he gets back in there with the Lord, he's talking with the Lord, the glory and the presence of God again calls his face to shine. He goes back out, then you find the veil come back. Well, can I say that in, the, in this, uh, this side of things and thinking about the law and thinking about what the law is, that's, this is where we'll go to 2 Corinthians in chapter number 3 if you'd like to turn over there. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians in chapter number 3 uh, concerning this very thought of where we are, it tells us in verse number 13, it says, And not as Moses which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. It goes on to say in verse 14, But their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. You see, there was something that this pointed to. And when Moses come down off that mount, and he brought with him those tables, what that table, what that was going to say is when you do wrong, there's a requirement. Ultimately, is what's saying. There's something required when sin takes place. Now, can I say, when he come back down off that mountain, he said there's also a sacrifice that can be made. That's what takes place in the temple. That's why we find the veil in the temple. That's why when they go into the, or the tabernacle, I should say. That's why when they go into the tabernacle, they offer that sacrifice. But for what it is that they've done wrong, there's a sacrifice that's been made. There's blood that is to be shed. Why? For without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. But we see that But when they go, or when someone goes behind the veil, and when the blood is applied, there is, that we find there is 
uh, some uh, covering of the sin, maybe not taken away, but praise God when Jesus came. But when the Lord Jesus, that lamb uh, that, was, uh, that was slain before the foundation of the world, we find him seen in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 or chapter 3. Paul is describing what is taking place with Moses and how the veil was there. And he says, but their minds were blinded. And we know uh, that this uh, blinding uh, took place there with the children of Israel. Uh, but he said that Jesus was the veil. He goes to tell us how the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, for until this day remaineth the same veil and taken away in the reading of the Old Testament. The Old Testament couldn't take the veil away. The law couldn't remove the veil. The law simply revealed what was going on. But the law, even the keeping of the law, was designed maybe for saving, but no one could keep it. No one was able. There's a veil there. Notice this, the Bible says, which veil is done away in Christ. And he begins to explain how Christ Jesus done away in the veil. But even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. He said if they still stand and they still read the law of Moses and they still go by the law, the veil is there. If you look to the law, you'll see a veil. If you look to the Lord, you'll see victory. If you look that way, what you're going to find is bondage. If you look into what Moses had to say. The Bible says in John chapter 1 that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And so what? What we see is the grace of God come down to man and the glory of God put off when it come to man and then the glory is made known unto man because of the Lord Jesus Christ is what Paul says. Amen. Notice this. It says in verse number 16, nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord. When what? What's it? I'll tell you what it is. It's the heart. When it shall turn to the Lord. It's what the Bible says. The veil shall be taken away. So when, can I just put it like this? If someone that is sitting there hearing the law read, there's a blind veil there. Now, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, amen. amen. And the Spirit of the Lord is the one that does the work of the Lord through the Word of God. Now, think about this. When that heart turns, and it turns to the Lord Jesus Christ, the veil's removed. The veil is gone. It's removed now. It's no longer there. And considering what the Lord Jesus Christ done when he was crucified, you find in the temple that day the veil was rent in twain from top to bottom and symbolizing his flesh being rent. There's access now. There's ability to go to the Lord. But the Bible says in verse number 18, and we'll be through. Look with me in verse number 18 of 2 Corinthians chapter 3 because I believe this ties right back in to where we are. But we all, but we all with open face beholding, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. He said as beholding. He said you're beholding in a glass or in a mirror. What you're beholding is not you. At this point, what you're beholding is the Lord. He said, and, and, and you are being transformed. You are being changed by what? By the Lord, by the Spirit of God. Well, how does he do it? The Word of God. I, I, I began here and I'll end here tonight in thinking about how the face of the prophet was shown and how it shined for the Lord. It's amazing to me. Once again, I'll say it this way. I told you it wouldn't be no profound truth this evening outside of the Word of God. But what's amazing to me is how Moses devoted so much of his time to the Lord. So much of it was devoted to the Lord. So much of it was devoted to God. Every time you turn around, Moses, it was something between Moses and the Lord. Moses and the Lord was talking. Moses and the Lord were walking. Moses and the Lord was this. Moses and the Lord was that. It's almost like you couldn't find Moses without knowing the Lord's there. I mean, that's just the way it was. But the fact is, is he spent, he spent himself with the Lord. And today, if we're going to shine for the Lord, we're going to have to do the same thing. We're going to have to be the same way. There, it, 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 there's no other way. There's no, there's no easy, quote unquote, route to get there. There's no shortcut for the glory of God to be in your life. 
No, that, that's why there's so many powerless saved people. Because they're just, they're just waiting around for a little shortcut to take. Have power with the Lord. They're not willing to empty out of themselves and what, they, what their own desires are, what their own wants are, what their own things are. Well, I want that too bad. I'm not going to give that up. I'll just hold on to that. And then later on down the road, I'll, I'll take a little shortcut around and have the glory of the Lord in my life or have the presence of God in my life. But it, you don't understand how important that is, though, to have His presence, His abiding presence in your life for others to see. They're, they're, I'm saying on, on my end as well how important that is. Yes. For others to see Christ Jesus in you. And when they look at you, it's like, you know, I don't understand. It's, I just don't. It's not like I see you. I see the Lord. That, that, that had to be what they seen when they seen Stephen. They had, to see the, they had to see something as his face shone like of an angel is what the Bible says. It wasn't the same Stephen that they started to see him when, when it started. It was different. He was different. He spent time with the Lord. He was full of faith. He was full of the Holy Ghost. And what you'll find is he, was, he spoke with boldness. Mm -hmm. yes. there's, there's, there's one thing that some people get upset about. I can't believe he, that person would speak that way. Well, when you, when you are filled with the Spirit, you'll find no problem speaking with boldness. You go find it in the Word of God. Yes. You go see every time someone's filled with the Spirit, you see if they're not speaking with boldness. Right. They will be. It's, it's, in, it's in the Word of God. You go look it up, find it yourself, and you'll see it. But at the same time, it won't be about them. It was never... You can read Paul's writings, and, you'll, and you, sometimes you'll think, man, he's telling a lot about what happened to him. But it's always because of him. He's always talking about the Lord. He said, there's nothing for me to glory in save the cross. That's all I have to glory in. But that's why the glory of God was seen on him. Because he understood. Take time with the Lord. Spend time with him. Let your appetite be him. Let your desires be him. Let your wants be him. Let everything that has to come out of you be the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, that'll be difficult. Sometimes it might, it might require some things, yes. I, I'm not saying that it's going to be easy. You might struggle with some things. This old flesh, it struggles with letting go of things. But it don't mean don't let it go. Just because your flesh struggles with it. I promise you, there's someone on the inside who will help you with that. But you'll have to, you'll have to go. You'll have to take that initiative and, and begin. And the Lord will be with you along the way, every step. We ought to shine for the Lord in this day and this hour. As I'll say this, my pastor would say that the, this day and hour we live in, this day and hour we live in, is the greatest day and hour to live in because it's the darkest. It's the darkest. And the light will shine the brightest. And, but, you know, people will tend to gravitate to light if they see it's real. Yes. They will. Some may get upset, get aggravated about it, but you, you leave it long enough and you continue living for the Lord and they'll see it. And there'll be some sort of pull. But it's the one on the inside that's doing the pulling. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Shine for the Lord. Father in heaven, I love you and I thank you and I praise you. Thank you for the word of God. I pray God, somebody tonight, somebody this evening, would decide, Lord, as we've already sang, though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. And decide to follow the Lord Jesus fully, holy, lock, stock, and barrel. Keep nothing back. Father, I ask you, please. Lord, I desire thy presence more than anything else. Lord, I'm reminded of what Job said. That, that above his necessary food, 
above his necessary food. He esteemed thy word higher. I'm reminded of Job saying that. Lord, help us that we won't put off some things. Help us to understand that by doing so and spending time with you, we're putting on so much more. It's not because of us, it's because of you. I thank you and I praise you for all that you do. I ask you, Lord, if there be one here tonight that's not saved, that you'd save them. I ask you, Lord, if there be one here tonight that's not right with you, that get their heart right with you. But I ask you, Lord, for the saints of God that are, that are stirred up for you, that they just continue to press forward, serve you with gladness until we meet thee, O oh Lord. I thank you and praise you in Christ Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. I'll give you a few prayer requests um, this evening. Uh, I'd like for us to pray for Brother Matt Niehaus's mother. Um, So they left out last night or yesterday afternoon um, going to Iowa. They're going to drive through the night to be able to get there to see Brother Niehaus's mother. Um, at that point, she wasn't coherent. Um, so it sounds like today she's been in and out, obviously. Um, and Brother Niehaus wants us to pray uh, that he have an opportunity uh, to witness the gospel um, to his mother again. Um, and that she would be receptive. Um, so I would ask you to pray for that, that the Lord would be able to use them uh, to speak with her. Um, also, uh, I would ask you to pray for Sister Ida Woolridge's um, son-in-law. His name is Joel. Um, I told her I would be able to remember that name. I figured that prophet's name would stick with me. But um, he is over in Rome or Cedartown, if I'm not mistaken. They had to put him on a ventilator today. Um, he's sick. Um, so we we'll just ask if we pray for him. Um, so I'm asking you to pray for Joel. That's his sister, Ida Warridge's son-in-law. That's her oldest daughter's husband. Um, they just moved over to Rome, I believe, not long ago. But um, he is sick. He's in the hospital. He's on a ventilator. Uh, he's not feeling well or he's not doing well. So uh, I would ask that if you would please pray for uh, him as well as Sister Niehaus. Does anybody else pray request this evening before we go to the Lord? Uh, let's pray for Sister Katie Williams, Brother Jimmy's mother. Um, she's had a nosebleed or two here in the last, uh, little, in the last day or so. Um, and Sister Janie's home with her tonight. So uh, we want to pray uh, for her and hold her up in prayer. But. Uh, anybody else will we go to the Lord in just a few moments and pray? Um, we'll seek the Lord. Sister Hannah? Um, please pray for a lady named Tracy. Her sister in law or sister passed away probably from an overdose. Okay. And left four kids behind, and Tracy's taking care of them soon. Okay. I don't think any of them are Christian. Tracy. Pray for all. Okay. We'll pray for Tracy. Anyone else before we go to the Lord? Well, nobody else has anything. But Matthew Walker, if you would, I'd ask you to pray for us, please. And uh, you try to remember these prayer requests that have been made. The Lord knows them. Um, but if you would, you pray that God would work in them, please.
considered you know, just how uh, how short the time may be there in order to just give the words to speak or to give her the clarity of thought that she would understand clearly what was being said or there'd be an opportunity for salvation there in her soul. And dear God, we uh, do pray for uh, Sister Ida or her son and Lord, uh, just pray that your will be done there and Lord, you minister to that, that man's needs, Lord, for his body, soul, and his spirit. And just pray that you'd help Sister Ida, Lord, for, to be the mother that she needs and uh, she needs to be and that you need her to be during this time. And Lord, that she'd just trust you and just Brother Jerry as well. Yes, Lord. And Lord, that your will be done. And Father, we pray for uh, this lady, uh, Tracy, God, and uh, wait for some her, Lord, that she would find that, that, that uh, strength that's available only in you Amen. to take care of that need. That's the that's major thing to be dropped on someone all at once. We just pray that you'd help her to, to see, Lord, the strength in you to uh, take care of that. So I'll stand. <coughs> Let's lift our hands toward heaven. We'll quote Psalm 103.1. Bless, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Good night. God bless you.